I, so in addition to the article itself, or to the discussion of my article itself, I will now analyze one review on the ground of which the article has been rejected. I will not mention the name of the journal that rejected it. I can, however, say that it is some kind of evolutionary psychology journal. But if you would like to know who it was and who the editor was, I can tell it to you confidentially. I won't, I won't make that public, but whoever wants to know it, I will tell him or her who that was who rejected the paper on these grounds. So, since that screen capture device I used for the article is bad, you c the script, the, uh, the writing is illegible, or almost illegible, I will show you my face and give the text in the box, in the description box. Now, here it says the reviewer's comments on your work have now been received. The editor's words mention no name here. You will see that they are advising against publication of your work, therefore I must reject it. For your guidance, I append the reviewer's comments below. Now let's see how the reviewer guides me to a better place or to a better, would like to guide me to a better condition. I would like my, my work to uh, be improved in its, in its quality. Reviewer 1. I did not receive anything from reviewer 2, so obviously reviewer 2, not, well not so obviously, maybe he rejected it right away without many comments, or he accepted it. Uh, reviewer 1 says, I recommend rejecting this paper because of the existence of three major flaws, one logical and two technical. While I think the topic could be of interest, I think it is very badly formulated in this paper. First, the logical flaw concerns the justification of the paper as well as, it, as well as the reasoning behind the study and the introduction of the dilemma. To explain my purposes, or to explain my purpose, I will first talk about the cancer smoke example as the author does in the paper, and then I will focus on homosexuality. Let's assume there is an observed positive correlation between the fact of smoking, I'll call S, and lung cancer occurrence, I'll call C. As in any correlation studies, it is impossible to say which one of the variable is the cause and which one is the consequence. Furthermore, as Fisher pointed out, it is even possible that a third variable, let's call it G, which is not known, can be the cause of both lung cancer and smoking. A genetic factor, a genetic factor G, can be the cause of the occurrence of lung cancer and of the urge of smoking without any causal relationship between smoking and lung cancer. The Fisher's sick dilemma is caused by the fact that the only fact one knows is that there is a correlation between smoking and cancer. Can I smoke if I know it gives pleasure to me, that it can kill me if G does not exist? Sick. This is what the reviewer wrote. Can I smoke if I know it gives pleasure to me, that it... Can I smoke if I know it gives pleasure to me, that it can kill me if G does not exist. That is, if there is a direct causal relationship between smoking and cancer, or it cannot increase my probability to have a cancer if G exists. Sick, that's what he wrote. The dilemma is caused because there are two exclusive situations, G exists or not, and we cannot decide about it with only knowledge of correlation between S and C. If G exists, there are two groups of people, two for simplicity. 
in a given population. One with the genetic factor, now some clarity uh, is there again. One with the genetic factor causing cancer and smoking, let's call it G+, plus, and one without it, G-. minus. The existence of the genetic factor in G plus group will cause them to smoke and to have lung cancer, or more precisely, will let them have a greater probability than G minus to smoke and have lung cancer. However, I am afraid the author completely misled the reasoning in page 3. Yeah, this is the reviewer's grammar. He is obviously not a native speaker of English. However, Neither am I, but you could make an effort. However, I am afraid the author completely misled the reasoning in page 3, line 20, when he says it is better not to smoke because it makes it less probable that the carcinogenic genetic factors are present. The fact of smoking does not change the status of a given individual. An individual from G plus does not become G minus because he does not smoke. The genetic factor G plus causes the fact of smoking and not the converse. Smoking is not the cause of genetic factors G plus. To my mind, it is a major logical flaw because an identical reasoning is dumb because an identical reasoning is dumb for the correlation between female fertility I call F and male homosexuality I call H. Page four, line twelve. It is better to become homosexual since this makes more this makes it there is a citation mistake in the reviewer's comments a quotation mistake it is better to become homosexual since this makes it makes it is miss is missing it more probable that the genetic factors for a larger than average maternal family are present once again i think the author is completely misleading maybe is mis misled, read it like that in order to uh, establish some, some sense to, to the language of the reviewer. If there is a genetic factor G explaining the positive correlation between F and H, uh, f uh, uh, any individual in G plus group will have a greater probability to be homosexual and to be relative with females which have who have a greater fertility than individuals in G minus. It is not because an individual decides to become homosexual that it increases the probability that his female relatives have the genetic factor G plus. Further in the text page five line seven the author even says that it is clear that becoming homosexual still increases the animal's hope that his family will be larger than average. I do not see the reviewer speaks again. I do not see what data allow the author to say, uh, again, a quote, quote, it is clear, unquote, and once again, becoming homosexual does not change or ensure the